found everything for us? I think there's got to be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. You think so? How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right, then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That means the time of death. you found everything for us? I think there's got to be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. You think so? How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right, then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased was a If you're listening to this, then... His head was knocked out and dropped. Following that, he was... Forest? There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. I know. The written report says he was drunk, but... I don't understand. So the official report lied about how he died? The report lied because someone wanted a closed case. Because they didn't want anyone to look into his death. Do you think you found everything? 
I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Thank God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? This is our job, Peggy. We, we gotta do it. Oh, you're right. So, what's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Fremant Plunker here? Who's this? Is it you? Goose? Plunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Radio Man? What's up? Solving mysteries, saving lives. The huge. Right, 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 right on. Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? Sh she asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. So we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's big of you, Plunker. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's nothing. <sighs> Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, Radio Man. <gasps> I'll just. Go get her. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm I'm glad you're still okay. Oh. Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. I can't blame you. I'd be jumpy too. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought. Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. We found evidence to the contrary. But it's true. And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. One day, I came into work to find a, a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in and he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but 
Well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand, she needed me. We understand. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Maybe we could have called Sandra, see what she knew. Ah, uh, well, you know, we win some and we lose some, I guess. I guess. Looks like we've got a call coming in. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Boris. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight, but I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. You want to do that now? Really? Why? Of course now! It's his birthday! I won't have a chance to do it again until next year! May as well, Forrest. Uh, fine. What's his name? Thank you, Boris. He's my Uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you'd like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my god damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza! Start a job. You son of a bitch! Stop calling us! God damn it, Peggy, this is your fault! My fault? I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. Ugh. Don't worry, we've already got another caller on the line. Just pick it up, okay? This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> caller. <sighs> Ponty. Forrest? Forrest? Are you okay? <sighs> Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest? Sorry, sorry, that was... that was too much. It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's all I'm going to say about that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16 The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Don? We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Uh, never mind that now. First, I'm calling because I need your help. Are you in danger? Uh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. 
Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Don't you have a key to get in? Only for the apartment door. The front gate requires an entry code. The future is electronic, I guess. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment building between the town hall and the trailer park, but I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. Shit. I'm guessing you're not a dog person. No, I'm not. It's my neighbor's dog. Boy, I wish he'd muzzle that thing and... Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any... He's coming down the street. What's the name of the security system? Starling 4000. User manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. Starling Security 4000, huh? That's right. Very newly installed. I need the key code before the whistling man gets me. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Don into her apartment. Coming up for your listening pleasure, it's Caged Tiger with their single, One Last Goodbye. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me or was there something? Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah, well, tell you what, we have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 Security Manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. When you're ready, shut the music off. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I've been so afraid. What's the code to the gate? The code is 811220. Thank you, Forrest. Alarm has already deactivated. The alarm deactivation? Oh, I think you gave me the wrong number on purpose. Well, I'll just do this the hard way. Forrest, what did we do? Rick? 
Ricky! Ricky! Hello? Hello? Forrest? Is that you? Did you have something to do with this? Ricky, whoever that was, she was trying to get into the building. I tried to help, but... She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him! That was the whistling man! The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle... Maxie, stay strong. Okay, Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we process what just happened. So, the whistling man is a woman? I know. I, I can't believe it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. I thought she was just regular Gallows Creek Strange. Really, Forrest? Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. 